Okay, well, welcome everyone to our webinar for today. The topic for today is called Record Keeping Practices for Small Businesses. I am excited to have you join us today for our class. Um, we are joined by the team at Bank of the Sierra who will be providing today's presentation. With that, I would like to go ahead and get started here very quickly. Um, I want to share with you my screen. I want to um, remind you if it's your first time joining the Zoom meeting, please go ahead and um, use the chat box to interact during the meeting. You will, 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 we will be having a Q&A session at the end. So if you're using a computer, please select the option where it says um, sorry about that. You should say where it says chat box. If you're using a tablet, you will go ahead and select the more option and then select the chat option. As mentioned, please use this chat feature during the presentation. I would like to take this moment to say thank you to each of the following companies for their support towards our organization and for allowing us to continue bringing these webinars to our small business community writing other programs and services as we start to rebuild from the pandemic. And with that, I would like to say thank you to Bank of America, Comcast, Bank of the West, Bank of the Sierra, Chevron, Donagy Sales, Union Bank, JP Morgan Chase and Company, and Wells Fargo. Thank you so much for your support. And this is our agenda for today. My name is Sandra Vidrio and I am the Business Development Officer here at the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation. Mentioned, we will be joined by the team at Bank of the Sierra and our facilitator guide for today will be Paulia Gagnier, who is the CRA officer. And at the end of the presentation, we will be having a Q&A session. And right here, I would like to take a few minutes to share a little bit more about the foundation and the work that we do here in, our, in the community. So we cover all eight counties of the San Joaquin Valley and of course other um, areas as well. And our technical assistance is an opportunity to provide businesses, business owners, connecting them with resources at the moment, connecting them with grant opportunities, funding opportunities to rebuild and open their business. And of, of course, for those startup entrepreneurs, providing them with resources available to get them started and provide the tools that they need um, to get the right permits and licenses to be able to launch their business. And we are still continuing to offer weekly webinars, and these are in the topics of legal, finance, marketing. Today's topic is on record keeping. So these are program. These topics are for to continue um, rebuilding your business, as well as topics of interest for the community. And lastly, we have our CDFI program. So the Fresno Foundation, we are a recognized um, community development financial institution, and we have different programs available not only for businesses within the city of Fresno, but our rural communities throughout Fresno County and other surrounding areas. So here's our contact information, our 559-222-8705, and our team is here to help you through navigating this business journey. And here is the list of our presenters for today. So we are joined uh, by the Bank of the Sierra team. We'll be getting started by having Mr. Bart Bernal being our lead presenter, joined by Jacob Little, Rosemary Martinez, Diana Perez, David Source, and Paula, who is our facilitator guide. And before getting started, I do, I know most all of you, um, well, those that RSVP received um, the handout that was provided during the, pre previously to the present, to the webinar. And I also want to take a few minutes, if possible, to conduct a poll. And this poll is basically that handout that was provided, but I thought it would be nice to see the results from all participants at the moment. So if you can please take a few minutes, um, a few seconds, actually, there's only six questions listed on here to take the poll. So this is the pre-assessment um, to get us started for today's presentation. So if you see the poll on your screen, please go ahead and submit your answer at this time. Thank you.
and I'll give about um, another 60 minutes just so that we can um, get the feedback from participants. We have 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Okay, so I will go ahead and end the poll at this time. And I will go ahead and share the results. And then at the end of the quiz, we will, I'm sorry, at the end of the presentation, we will go, go ahead and review each one of these, um, these questions to see here are the responses from the poll. So I'll make sure to download a copy for our records. And we will now continue with welcoming the team at uh, Bank of the Sierra. So Paula, I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, to get started. So I want to say welcome. Great. To you Thank you so much, Sa Sandra, for allowing Bank of the Sierra to provide this important financial literacy um, educational workshop to your participants. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with going over some of the content in regards to record keeping for um, small businesses. And as you can see on the screen, we do have the polling up because uh, we really wanna test your pre-knowledge before we get started uh, looking at the material. Again, we're going to have um, a Q&A session uh, during the first question. There is a question after a few of the slides here and there's going to be a, another chance to ask questions. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Mark. All righty, well, thank you very much, Paula, for that introduction. Um, sorry, I had a couple of little technical issues on my end, uh, trying to get into a meeting. That's the way virtual meetings go these days, I suppose. Um, so I'll go ahead and just kind of skip over the introductions for the sake of time, since I know it probably took a little bit longer for us to get started today. Um, but again, on behalf of the Bank of the Sierra team, I'd like to, first off, thank you guys for the opportunity to um, be here with you today and talk about record keeping for small businesses. Um, my name is Mark Bernal. I'm the Director of Branch Administration with Bank of the Sierra. Um, I've, been with, I've been in banking for about 18 years now, uh, which might be hard to believe because I look so young, I know. Um, just kidding, just a bad attempt at humor. Um, but one of the things I have seen in my career in banking, um, because I specialize really with community banks and serving business customers, is the importance of record keeping. Um, as with many things, uh, success in any type of business really involves the fundamentals. And one of the most important fundamentals in business is actually great record keeping. Um, so what are we going to do today? Well, as has been mentioned already, we're going to discuss some of the concepts in record keeping. Uh, we're, we'll do a group activity, and then we'll also try to have some time in there for uh, questions. Um, just a side note, if uh, this is supposed to be an active discussion, so if you have anything, uh, some particular experience or knowledge in any of the areas that we're covering, please feel free to share that with the class uh, so that um, if we all contribute, it'll just make the whole learning experience that much better. And if you have any questions about something or if something isn't clear, you know, please go ahead and ask those questions. Uh, we have the slide that kind of covers the objectives up. Um, on this page, as you, as you can see. Uh, so what is it that we want to take away from this presentation? Well, we definitely want to understand the concept of record keeping, uh, why it's important to a small business. Uh, we'll want to identify some of the best practices, some of the rules, and also some of the tools that are available to small businesses to be able to keep good records and also understand how these tools work. Um, we'll also be able to understand the benefits that come from keeping really good records, especially for a new business or a small business. And then as time permits, we'll identify some software products that might help it 
help uh, small businesses have an easier time maintaining quality records. Uh, as has also been discussed, you guys received a copy of the presentation, uh, the participants guide. Um, and then I also saw that you just did the poll, uh, which is great because it helps us understand where we're at, right? Like what we already know, maybe identify some areas that we don't know very much about or there's some gaps in. And that way we could really um, take something or learn something from this presentation. Uh, with that, Paula, if you or whoever is driving, if you wouldn't mind going over to the next slide, which I believe is slide six. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so record keeping. A uh, very common term, but what does it actually mean? Or what's it actually referring to? Well, record keeping actually refers to being very disciplined and keeping really organized business records. Um, I've seen it in my career as, as a banker that it's really one of the most important responsibilities that a small business owner has. Honestly, I've seen record, record keeping kind of make or break of most businesses. And so really to say that the success of your business depends on having an effective record keeping system is kind of an understatement. I think that's, that's just a really important major part of it. And that is true whether your business is a small business or you're a sole proprietorship or a corporation or you have partners or whether your business is very complicated. Um, it still needs to have really good record keeping. Now that can range, uh, if we go over to slide seven, um, that can record keeping can range from very simple methods of storing records to very complicated ways. Um, you can have manila folders that, that are your filing system, or you can use a compli complicated electronic system to file your records. Um, but whether it's simple or complicated, the key is that it has to be able to store all of your records and it also has to be easy for you as a business owner to be able to find those records when you need them. And of course, the most important thing, whatever system you use has to work for you and for your particular business needs. So the type of business that you have, what, the size of your business, how complex it is, that's going to help you determine what type of record keeping system you need to have. Um, and it's also something that we just need to stay up to date with. Um, I mentioned that we have to be disciplined about being organized. So making sure that we are consistently keeping good records. A uh, good resource for you guys, um, if you are new to record keeping would be the SBA website. That's at www.sba.gov. And in their search box, if you search record keeping, it'll give you a host of information um, about record keeping resources. Um, and also tips and tricks on how to keep good records. Now, a uh, very important reminder on this one that keeping good records goes beyond just your business records. It also involves keeping good personal records. Um, again, uh, drawing on my experience as a banker, um, when business needs arise, you may, for example, want to apply for a business loan. Well, often uh, lenders and especially banks will also want to consider your personal financial records. So being able to keep good personal records is going to be fundamental um, and is going to help you um, make a success of your business as needs arise. Um, over to slide eight, perfect, thank you. Um, so why is record keeping important? Well, there's lots of reasons why record keeping is really important. It helps you avoid tax issues. It'll help you meet the legal requirements for your business, uh, both at a county, state, or federal level. Um, it'll also help you track operation, operational details, um, track lots of information for your business so that you could really understand it and also be able to plan well for the future. So there's several bullet points here. Let's kind of get into them a little bit more um, in, by the details. So first off that first one, tracking details. Now, as you probably already know, um, owning a small business requires that you track a lot of information. Information, for example, about customers, about your sales, or if you're in the retail business, about your inventory. Now, if you don't have a good record keeping system, it's going to be very difficult to keep track of all of these details. And if you lose sight of some of these details, well, what could happen? Well you can have problems taking care of the needs of your customers. 
Uh, if you don't know details about your customers, such as very basic things, who your customers are and what they like to buy, you may not be able to meet their demands. Also, you could risk disappointing customers and then losing customers. So really staying informed of your, uh, about who your customers are, uh, the types of things they like to purchase or order, and the inventory that you have available is very, very important. And the only way to be able to really do that or meet that challenge is to have a proper record keeping system. As I mentioned, record keeping also helps with planning. Uh, planning so that you can meet the needs of your business in the future. Um, as a kind of rhetorical question, if you're a business owner who fails to track uh, inventory needs or fails to track what your customers are purchasing, how do you know what you need to keep in, keep in inventory, perhaps the next quarter or for the rest of the year, or maybe even beyond that? For example, um, what if you own a clothing store? Uh, now, clothing store owners, they need to know and be able to anticipate the types of clothing they're going to have to carry throughout the year because things are cyclical, right? The seasons are, are there's different seasons in the year. So uh, perhaps in the summertime, you might need swimsuits, but you probably don't want to be carrying a whole bunch of swimsuits in the fall and wintertime. Uh, that can create some waste. So being able to keep accurate records is going to help you anticipate uh, what type of inventory you need to keep. Uh, it'll also help you avoid carrying too much inventory and creating waste or carrying too little and not being able to maximize on opportunities that come with different seasons. Also very important, it's gonna help you anticipate if you need to finance um, being able to carry certain types of things. I also mentioned being able to um, meet legal requirements. Now, as you are well aware, being a business owner is going to require a whole lot of uh, legal compliance, uh, whether it's executing contracts, uh, perhaps rental agreements if you have an office location, or other contracts with vendors or with customers. Um, you also need to have uh, various licenses or permits, both at a county or a state or a federal level. And not to mention, if you're an employer, you're going to have to have um, records uh, about your employees it's for payroll and tax purposes. So being able to keep all these things organized, um, readily available, so you can access them quickly as needed, um, and not have and not lose any of them is going to be crucial. Uh, touching a little bit, going a little bit further on contracts and leases, uh, having a good system for maintaining contracts. You know, I can't say that enough. That's very, very critical. Um, again. We all sign contracts very regularly, but especially for business owners, you're going to sign contracts for, serv for services, uh, for sales. If you get a loan for financing, uh, if you're leasing uh, equipment or a location, uh, if you're making purchases, there's a whole host of contract types. And again, we're going to have to go back to those contracts to be able to read the details uh, and fulfill the obligations, or maybe uh, demand that others fulfill their the obligations that they agreed to. So being able to have these contracts readily available is for your own protection as a business owner and for the protection of your business. And one especially important thing is to always maintain um, the original signed copies of any legal legally executed contracts. So making sure that we are organized about those things. And of course, with your licenses and permits, it's not a one and done type deal, right? Uh, if we get a license or a permit, there may be occasions where we are required to show these licenses and permits. Uh, some examples of the things that we have to file could be a business license with the city or with the county, um, a fictitious business name statement, uh, commonly referred to as a doing business as statement or a DBA statement, uh, maybe a seller's permit or a state license, or if you have a restaurant or a food truck, food preparation permits, um, these types of things, we have to keep them. And again, there may be times when we're required to show proof that we've got these uh, licenses or permits. And so we need to be able to keep good records in this area as well. On top of that, um, many of our businesses require different types of insurance. Uh, so we need to have a good method to be able to renew um, perhaps insurance demands and provide copies of our insurance records as well, 
but then also making sure that we're renewing our business licenses, our permits, again, to protect ourselves and our businesses from any penalties or other legal issues that could come from not renewing these, these types of things. And I mentioned employees, which I know having employees can be complicated. Um, so if you do have employees, your record keeping capacity needs to be at a level where you can comply with all of the local and state and federal uh, legal requirements that come with the payroll and having people working for you. Now, depending on the number of employees that you have, that's really going to determine um, what type of payroll service you have. Uh, you might actually want to go out and contract with an, a full-blown payroll service, or you might be able to hire an independent contractor to help you with your payroll. Or perhaps you go through an employment agency to get employees. Um, there is a lot of different um, a lot of different options that you have to help you meet payroll requirements. Um, but again, it's very important to be honest with ourselves and and understand the demands so that we could uh, make good decisions that are going to uh, protect us from any issues. Because there's a whole bunch of things that we really have to track. Uh, for example, all of the hiring paperwork, uh, the basis on which we're paying wages and how much we're paying, wa how much we're paying our employees, uh, social security numbers, uh, personal information for our employees, and then also the everyday things, right? Tracking how many hours people are working, um, doing the additions or deductions from their wages, uh, tracking total wages that we're paying each pay period, income tax withholdings, uh, fair labor, labor standards acts, uh, information that we have to track, injury reports, uh, just a whole bunch of different records that we have to keep. So again, uh, this might be an area where it may, it may be most wise to work with a professional payroll service or with your accountant um, to get some advice on how we can uh, make the best um, decisions in these areas. Another really important resource that we have available is the IRS website. Uh, if you go on the IRS website, which is www.irs.gov, um, under publication 15, um, there is a link for an employer's tax guide, which has a lot of information for you. Um, and again, taxes, right? The dreaded taxes, that is such an important area where we need to have a well-maintained record keeping system. So we can keep up with our tax reporting requirements and keep up with any payments or other requirements that may, uh, may apply to us. Uh, going on to slide number nine, um, we talked a little bit about business operations and tracking details. So again, owning a small business is going to require that we track a large amount of information about our customers, uh, sales, and perhaps even inventory. And if we don't keep detailed records, uh, we can lose sight of important information that can help us make good decisions, good business decisions that will enable us to serve our customers and make a success of our business. Uh, if we don't know the details about our customers, then uh, we may not be able to meet their demands, which could cause us to lose customers and then cause our businesses to uh, fail. So we need a good system for being able to stay informed about our customers, keeping up to date with their orders, making sure that we're getting their orders out on time or properly, and being able to keep inventory so that we could meet their demands. Um, these are all just sample reasons. You are all, I'm sure you could all name many more uh, that would highlight the importance of being able to keep a good record keeping system. Uh, because if we don't, again, making decisions, everyday decisions, or even longer term decisions that are going to impact the success of our business uh, will be very, very difficult. Uh, so with that, uh, that brings us over to the next section, which uh, Paula, I believe that is actually um, where we get to get one of our uh, operations managers. Yeah. Yes, so um, be able to help us out with the discussion yeah. point. Awesome. So Jacob, I'll go ahead and hand that over to you. And uh, if you wouldn't mind kind of introducing yourself a little bit first, since I skipped over that part.
I believe you're on mute, Jacob. Uh, we can't hear you. One moment, please. One Hi, Jacob, you're on mute. Uh, unmute your line. It's on the left side at the bottom, the little microphone at the bottom. So sorry, sounds like we're having some technical difficulties. Um, so we will get back to um, Jacob if he's able to hear us, but we can go ahead and really think about the um, discussion point here. And um, this is a really good time for you to think about identifying um, your records um, that you already keep and really think about how they're organized and how you can implement better practices in order to um, be able to reach your records whenever there is an issue, you'll know where the items are. Um, and also identifying um, how to plan records um, that, you know, that you're keeping. And that includes your legal records, tax records, and also think about your, um, your record keeping that you currently have. Um, also, also think about the records that you don't need. Um, so what I do as an example is I prior prioritize all of my business records. Um, for example, since I own real estate and I have several properties uh, in different states, I do have a, a, a file filing system um, that I use on my uh, through Excel. And we will be going over those, two, those uh, different tools um, in the next few slides. Um, but definitely think about what your current record keeping practices are right now in comparison to really improving them based on the tools that we're going to be providing today. Uh, next slide, please. So let's discuss record retention. So not only should small business owners keep good records, but owners should also know which of those records to retain and for how long. Record retention is the practice of keeping business and personal records over time. So good record retention is in the best interest of companies. A poor system of retention will prevent managers from retrieving information needed to make sound business decisions. A poor record keeping retention system also poses a security risk. So as you can see from table one, a sample of uh, records to keep and for how, how many years you should keep them. The Internal Revenue Service determines some record retention guidelines. Other retention requirements are legal in nature, such as what we may be required by a contract with those you do business with. Expert recommendations vary as well. Also retention schedules vary by region. For example, a state may have a different statute of limitation for legal liability. So ensure to check with your attorney for legal requirements. Also check with your accountant for financial related requirements. Um, Next slide, please. So let's take a look at some record keeping tools. So you should start your business with a simple record keeping system. As your business grows, expand your record keeping system to accommodate more records and 
and increasing complexity. Simple paper tools. Also, there's a tickler system, a computer system, a cloud computing, which includes accounting and file hosting. Uh, next slide, please. So let's look at a simple paper tool. This is something that you can actually start today. So with this is a file folder hold, which holds loose papers together for organizations and protection. File folders can easily be purchased at office supply stores. Also label file folders based on what is inside by writing directly on the tabs or writing by, uh, by writing on adhesive labels that are placed on the tabs. Also, you can use a hanging folder, hanging folder system. Use hanging folders to group several file folders together. For example, a hanging folder might be labeled clients to contain a number of individual client folders. Also a client, um, you can also store your information in a cabinet storage. So hanging folders are often stored in a filing cabinet. Be sure to lock the cabinet when not in use to protect your client's information. There's also an accordion folder, which opens like an accordion on top um, to reveal compartments for storing documents. Each compartment can be labeled. The accordion files are designed to store documents without a filing cabinet in a close or on a shelf. The next slide, please. Many business owners use a method sometimes called a tickler system for remembering upcoming events such as quarterly taxes, license renewals, insurance reviews, and renewals, upcoming bills, and callbacks. This is actually one of the systems I use um, to kind of store some documents, but also ensure that I keep them on my, um, my um, through a, uh, my computer, and I have like a zip drive that I keep um, some important documents on as well. Uh, next next uh, slide, please. So while most businesses will need to maintain some form of paper-based record keeping, computer-based systems are becoming the norm. Implement computer-based systems over time as you become more comfortable with computer record keeping. With computer systems, your records will take less space and can be transmitted over the internet. Many businesses and government agencies will allow you to purchase goods, apply for licenses, and pay fees over the internet. Remember backup computer system records to separate hard drives daily at a remote like location if possible. Next slide, please. Also, as an alternate or supplement paper-based and computer system, one more option is becoming increasingly available, and that is cloud computing. You can use cloud computing to store, manage, and process data on the internet rather than using a local personal computer. The advantage of cloud computing are, one, you don't need to install software upgrades. Two, you are less likely to lose your data because of computer crashes. And three, you can access your information such as financial information from any location that has access to the internet. So the more comfortable you are with computers, software, and the internet, uh, the more you should explore cloud computing for your business record keeping. Uh, next slide, please. Some accounting software companies offer their product with online accounting options. Instead of buying software, which runs on your computer, you may pay a monthly fee to use a, an accounting service on the internet. The software processing and financial data storage, both of which reside on the accounting company server are provided over the internet. And this really also depends on the level of where your business is at if you're starting out, um, there is a QuickBook software that you can purchase and that, and it's a really good, and they also have a free training service along with QuickBooks. However, as your business grows, you definitely wanna consider um, the other type of accounting software programs that's out there. Next slide, please. 
If you use computer files in your business, you can store and share those files with colleagues and clients using internet file hosting service. The files can be made accessible from any location with access to the internet by multiple people. You can use file hosting to archive large amounts of data. Both um, free and fee-based hosting services are available. Next slide, please. So regardless of whether you use a computer system, cloud-based computing, or a combination of the two, you will need to think about business software to help keep your records. Next slide, please. When choosing software, it's a good idea to determine your particular business needs. Businesses can, retail, can be retail or wholesale, service or product-based. It could be a one person operation or a large establishment. Do your research to make sure you buy software that matches your business type and size. Also consider factors such as um, these when deciding when software will work for, you, for your business. You wanna consider the point of sale system integration, inventory tracking, uh, manufacturing, uh, e-commerce based options, industry specialization, multiple users. Uh, so these are all the list of items that you should consider when thinking about purchasing software for your business. So you probably are already familiar with using email. So email has become a more of a significant means of doing business, more common than regular mail in many cases. Most business owners communicate with clients, employees, suppliers, vendors, and independent contractors that, you, that are currently using email. Uh, keeping a good filing system for your email communication is an, is an important as keeping a good paper-based system. Most email services allow you to create files just as you would for paper systems for keeping your email. You can manage email on your local computer hard drive. However, many email service providers um, such as Outlook um, you know, can be hosted on your hard drive as well. And also as with any web application, the main advantage of webmail over the use of a desktop email client is the ability to send and receive email wherever there is a web browser. So the main disadvantage though of webmail is the need to be connected to the internet while using it. So that's something to consider um, when you do have to get to some important emails. Um, so it's important to actually set up a tracking system uh, via your email and there's um, Outlook has one of the best um, type of um, systems where you can create meetings, cal you know, calendar your events and activities and tasks and also assign tasks through Outlook. So spreadsheets can be, oh, go, um, can you go to the business software spreadsheets? I think that's the one, okay, yes. So spreadsheets can be used for client information, inventory, timesheet, scheduling, budgeting, and more. A spreadsheet is a computer application that simulates a paper accounting worksheet. The spreadsheet displays multiple cells in a two-dimensional grid consisting of rows and columns. So each cell contains text, number, or formulas. So I, I, you, my best practice or, or one of the things I love is Excel. And actually Excel has several templates that you can use. So um, if you're not fairly familiar with Excel, there are some free um, Excel training courses that are available online. And if you are interested, I can get um, some of the links to you all um, to attend some of the Excel uh, workshops. Um, so I, I work on in Excel on a daily basis. Next slide, please. So if you're starting your first business, you will quickly find out how important, how important accounting software is to the success of the business. 
Accounting software keeps track of business financial records such as sales, expenses, inventory, and assets. The software delivers many advantages over manual systems, helping you to execute, manage, and track your critical financial transactions and related financial activities. Accounting software duplicates the functions of a manual system, but reduces human errors. Financial numbers are accurate because most calculations are done automatically, eliminating errors such as the transposition of numbers or other human mistakes. Also, accounting software speeds up calculation processes. So we will go over to our um, discussion part number two, and I will go ahead and turn this over to our um, third presenter, which is Rosemary, are you on the line with us? So um, in our discussion point number two is is to really think about your business and, and exactly where your business is. Um, thinking in terms of it's a, if you're a small business and you are growing, uh, think about the type of uh, accounting system that you will need uh, to help streamline your business. And also think about how, how might your accounting system be improved. For example, should you add something to improve payroll processing? Also write down any thoughts you may have with regards to improving in your accounting system over the coming year. Oh, can you go up one more slide, please? Let me discuss a little bit about business software training. Is this the slide or should I go back? Um, oh, I'll go up, please. I think, yes, yeah, should be business software training. There we go, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, no problem. So this is kind of what we were talking about is to ensure that you um, receive training whenever you do implement um, some sort of software into your business processes. There are a lot of free online tutorials and I will send the link to you all after um, we finish up with the slides. So when you choose to use business software, be sure to get trained, it's very, very important. You may wanna make sure that you can use all of the capabilities. Training will make you more efficient and more effective in the use of the software, both of which will save you, you time and money. Also take advantage of the options available for training such as tutorials, free trials, or online training. Okay, great. Um, next slide, please. So a few key points to remember. Remember to use record keeping tools that work for your business type sizing and complexity. Evaluate your business needs before purchasing business startware. So you can actually get started today. Um, and if you already have Microsoft Office on your computer, um, it would be best to start with Excel. Um, there are several beginner Excel courses through YouTube, as well as through the Microsoft Office training courses.
So today we've covered a lot of information today about record keeping. Um, I wanted to go over any final questions or comments that anyone may have in the group. Thank you. Thank you, Paula and Mark for, for the presentation for today. And I want to encourage participants, this is now the time to, you can either raise your hand through, through the chat, through the Zoom feature, or you can unmute yourself uh, to make your question to ask, or you could go ahead and send us uh, through chat. So we'll be here in the line. And then also, uh, Paula, is there the, do we have the answer keys to the, to the pre-assessment? Um, quiz, I think it'll be nice to. Yes, we do. So yeah, let's go over that. Um, I can go ahead and so, read the. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so the poll. So the first question here read, which of the following are reasons for keeping good records? So it would be A through D, uh, business detail tracking, planning, legal compliance, and tax preparation. Thank you. And the second question is, when creating a record keeping system, it's a good idea to... One moment, let me uh, pull it back up. One moment. <laughs> I had it up and then it disappeared on me. One moment. <laughs> okay, so the answer is B. Start simple and refine later. I think that was our winning answer here. <laughs> Number Great. three. Which of the following should be done before purchasing business software? So the answer was C as in cat, evaluate your business needs. Perfect. And number question number four is, which of the following are record keeping tools? It would be all of the above. It could be a manila folder, computer system, file hosting system. Uh, anyone you wanna use that will help simplify um, and streamline your business um, record keeping. Perfect. And question number five, for which type of small business is record keeping a good practice? That would be for all types of businesses, a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, or any um, business that you are in, it, you should start keeping records. You can actually keep your personal records as well to stay organized. And that includes sole proprietors that are either uh, with employees or no employees. And question number six, record keeping is the orderly and blank practice of storing business records. The answer is Diaz and David, disciplined. Perfect. So I know we had um, a lot of the, we had participants that were right on track. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Oh, great. That's awesome. Um, so we have our first question for today. And the first question here is, what is the difference between QuickBooks and Excel? How... Do we need both? I know we talked a little bit about the Excel tracking options that are available. Yeah, usually QuickBooks is, it's great for you if you have more than, I would say, um, four to five employees under you. Um, but if you're a sole proprietorship or, or just starting out, um, there are some different templates inside of Excel that you can use. So when you, if you already have Microsoft Office, on your computer or laptop. You can actually open up Excel and then ask if you want to open up a new worksheet. Then there's an, an, a um, drop down that actually shows you, um, you can actually put in a word like book or record keeping or bookkeeping. And it provides several samples of different types of uh, bookkeeping or record keeping templates. Perfect, thank you. And the other question here, it's a comment and a question. It says, thank you, Paula and Mark, for sharing these available information about record keeping. Question, how long do we keep receipts on inventories and customers? It really depends on the type of business that you are in. You should follow your state law or state um, or IRS um, record retention. We did provide the link to the irs.gov um, so it really depends. A, a lot of times what I've seen, businesses keep records for a minimum of five years. Um, you can find, you know, store like the older records, um, maybe in your garage or, <laughs> or, you know, just to keep a, you know, records of them because you never know if you may need them later on. 
uh, for myself, if the records are over three years, I normally keep them in, in a box in, in my garage or on a um, zip drive. But normally what I've seen is a, a minimum of five years. Thank you. And uh, we are still here connected for any other questions. I know there's one more slide here and I'll go ahead and jump to it. Um, just an overview conclusion and, and we can all participants that are still joined can ask more questions. Okay. And I also, I'm sorry, I also um, am putting some links into the chat box about some free Excel classes. Uh, I'm not, you know, so that they can look at that. And I, you know what, one of the sources that I use when I have a question, I can't figure out something, I always go to YouTube. <laughs> I mean, because sometimes they'll have like, um, you know, different tutorials on there. Um, so I use YouTube a lot um, when it comes to uh, Excel or, or trying to figure out some bookkeeping issue or accounting issue. Definitely, there's so much content available, like you mentioned, especially right now during the pandemic, there has been um, a lot more content that has become available um, at no cost for entrepreneurs. So this is a great moment uh, to do some, some the research, right? Some research on trying to find the best system that works for you, for your business. And of course, as you continue to grow your business. And I do want to remind participants that today's presentation is it is being recorded and it will be uh, saved also in our own YouTube account. So I'll go ahead and list here um, the link. That way you can view a recording um, later today. Great. Thank you so much for letting us um, meet with you all today. And definitely, if, you know, if you have any questions, you can filter them through Sandra. And then Sandra, you can send me the questions or you know, if there's any additional information that your participants need. Absolutely. It has been a really great pleasure to be able to connect with everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I know today's presentation was in English, and we are going to be having another presentation this Thursday at 1 p.m. at the same time. Um, so if you know of a business owner that could benefit from this presentation, please feel free to refer them and let them know of these great opportunities that are that exist for our small business community. So great. thank, thank you. you, Mark. Thank you, Paula. Take care, Sandra. Bye -bye. Thank you for your time. Thank, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. And, and if you're still connected, please leave your, uh, your email on the chat box so that we can send you a copy of, of the presentation as well as the additional resources that were shared. So with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, a great week, and we'll connect uh, for a, a future webinars. Thank you.